<clears throat> so um, the title of my talk today is uh, Practical Theology 202, Seeing, uh, Seeking Understanding for Difficult Ministry Issues. And uh, Phil, that was a great opener. It, um, so basically what I'm going to talk about for the next 12 minutes is a foundational component to how we can begin thinking theologically about what we're experiencing in our context. Um, you can apply this to in, any sort of context that you're a part of, whether it be a, a low so socioeconomic uh, economic status context, uh, an extreme post-Christian context like Marin County or other places in the Bay Area. Um, and so we're going to look at, just for a few minutes, uh, what this what this means, and I just so you know, I have all of my um, I have my entire talk script as well as my talk notes and my talk presentation at ryanreed.me forward slash practical theology. So if there's anything that you missed here in your notes, you can just go there, and so you can just sit back and listen and engage with me for the next uh, 11 minutes now. Um, but 79 days ago, um, I received a phone call from a student who who eagerly asked me to meet him in his in my office. Uh, which is really unusual, <laughs> especially in light of what we just talked about, for any student to want to meet you at church. And so for me, I, uh, I, I thought, okay, like, I'll be there in 10 minutes. I'm on my way. And so with this student, he, this, is, this, this wasn't the first time he had done this. Uh, this student contacted me in the past and asked me to meet him at various places because his parents were blown up and, and he was blown up with his parents and his parents were threatening to kick him out and stuff. So I just thought in the back of my mind that for this kid in particular, this, that's what was going on, that he must, been, he must have gotten kicked out of his house or he must have had some sort of conflict or maybe uh, a relationship that he was in just somehow disintegrated and he just needed to talk about it. So I pulled up to the driveway of our church office and there he stood just completely wrecked. And, uh, and so I went up to him and, and I asked him, like, man, what's going on? Like, is it, you know, what happened? And he looked at me with these tears in his eyes and he, and he just said, my sister just committed suicide just an hour ago. And, uh, and in that moment, he collapsed into my arms and he and I, we, we just cried together for the next couple of hours. And as I sat there listening to him talk about his sister and talk about the situation that had happened and, and the little bit that he really knew about what was going on, um, I just, I searched the Rolodex of my mind of, you know, how do we deal with ministry situations like this? How do we as youth pastors, as, as people who work with, with, with teenagers, who work with families, people who may be seminary trained, may not be seminary trained, but people who are called and equipped, how do we work with situations like this? How do we provide a faithful response, uh, typically as the youngest people on staff at our churches, or even just caring volunteers, caring parents who love these kids and want to see them do well, how do we provide a faithful response in light of situations like this to the kid, to the family, to the church, and also to the community? Um, so for the next couple of minutes, uh, we're going to look at that and, um, and answer a few questions. Now, you do practical theology all the time. You're con in fact, you're constantly doing practical theology. If you think about God in any shape or form, you're doing theology. And if you think about how it applies to your life, then you're, then you're making it practical for yourself and for those around you. So you do practical theology whether you realize it or not. So what I'm going to do is my goal this morning is to simply offer you a framework by which you may pause, assess, and critically think through a worked out, faithful response to any life event that occurs within your ministry setting. Now, this isn't a silver bullet. This isn't a, uh, I'm going to give you the answer to how to work through these kinds of situations. But what I will do is I will give you a framework that you can apply to situations that can help you work through a faithful response. And I think within the Bay Area in particular and within our post-Christian setting, having a bit of framework, having some, some tools in your pocket and some resources to help you work through these kinds of situations will actually, in the long run, help you work out a systematic response to how you respond to situations within your program, how you respond within situations that come up in schools or just when kids all of a sudden start falling away from your program and, and how to respond to those kinds of things. So, so we're going to look at that. Um, basically, practical theology asks four driving questions. And these questions are, what is going on? What, what's happening in this, in this situation that, that it just basically, what, what are the major facts happening in this, in this event, in this situation that are, that are comprising what's going on in front of you. So what is going on? The second question is, why is this going on? What, what events are, dry, are, are sort of the systematic uh, principles, sort of maybe some of the principles that are happening behind the scenes of this event that are compelling this event to take place? The third reason is, what ought to be going on? If there's an issue or a conflict happening within your ministry, then that's an indicator that something 
isn't right, that something's not the way that it should be. So what ought to be going on in place of whatever event is happening? And the fourth question is, how might we, how might we respond to this event? How might we respond to this event, not only as, as pastors, as leaders, but um, how, how might you respond to this event as a woman? Um, how might you respond to this event as a volunteer? Or as a, uh, as a teenage volunteer, as one of my uh, vo- uh, teenage volunteers who are sitting here. So how might you respond to this event within your life situation and within the context of, of where you come from? Um, so when you break down these, these four questions, they, they correspond to a particular task within practical theology. The first task, the first question of what is going on corresponds to the descriptive empirical task. Now, this task asks the question, what is going on and requires the ministry of presence. Richard Osmer, which, by the way, this entire talk has been inspired by a professor of mine named Richard Osmer. He actually writes a book called Practical Theology. If you go to that link that I told you about earlier, you can find a link on Amazon to purchase the book if you want. It's highly committed to you. But um, he describes the ministry of presence as the spiritual orientation of attending to others in their particularity and otherness within the presence of God. So in other words, when you do practical theology, when you, do, when you perform this task, the descriptive empirical task, you're entering into the world of another human being. When, when I listen to um, my uh, student talk about the situation of his sister committing suicide, for a brief moment in time, I was allowed to actually enter into his world. And that's one of the great privileges that we have as ministers, that we get to enter into the world of the people with whom we minister on a regular basis. And this task, you're, you're seeking to understand, you're seeking to learn to know what is happening within this situation. And so it requires the ministry of presence. But there's an inherent risk within this task. And that risk is that as you enter into the life situation of, of, this, of the particular individual that you're dealing with, then it's, it's possible for your emotions to become overrun themselves, right? It's possible for you to kind of get swept up and taken up by the emotions of the situation. And so as we enter into this ministry of presence with our people, one of the things that we constantly have to keep in mind is, is and I think this is just something that comes with experience, it comes with having this at the forefront of your mind as you enter into the world of, of your teenagers, as you enter into the world of your families, is to, is to have a certain distance and a certain differentiation between yourself and the people with whom you're ministering. So as you enter into that, um, That's the challenge for every minister, uh, to remain differentiated while staying fully and actively engaged. Um, I call this the um, uh, engaging without becoming. So you engage the person without becoming uh, the emotions of the other person. And this ministry of presence includes active listening, intercessory prayer, and thoughtful questioning. So that's the first task of practical theology. The second task is the interpretive task. And this task asks the question, why is this going on? What does research in the field of psychology, for example, what, how does that inform our understanding of, of suicide and the implications of suicide that has for the individual who committed it, but the individuals who are left dealing with the repercussions of that kind of event? Um, it asks the question of how do uh, professionals in the field of family systems uh, provide any sort of insight into situations like this? Like, How can we learn from, um, from what happened in this event and, and potentially prevent this kind of event from happening in other situations with families that maybe are dealing with the same, similar kinds of thoughts and questions. Uh, this task requires the ministry of prudence. Um, prudence is one of my favorite words I've been using a lot in, <laughs> with some of my core kids, um, because prudence is just another way of saying wisdom. And, uh, and when you think about life in a prudent sort of way, then you're thinking about it in a way that is, that is complicated. You, you actually embrace the, the, com- the complexity of life and, um, and, and, and the, the, the kind of the long ball game of life. If, if, you have a, if you have a ministry of prudence, that means you're thinking long term about how the actions of a particular individual impact actions that individual will face later down the track, rather than having more of a simplistic view that, that your actions don't uh, have any bearing on what happens later on down the road, which I think is actually a, um, just kind of a side note, is actually one of the driving characteristics of post-Christianity, but we can get to that later. Um, So Richard Osmer states about about, um, the ministry of prudence that that learned congregations, that that wise intellectual congregations, and and I think that these are the congregations that are are here in the Bay Area, um, 
They need leaders for whom the love of God and the desire to learn go hand in hand. This task involves the timely and difficult task of research, study, and preparation. I, I was listening to a Catalyst podcast a couple of weeks ago, uh, an old one uh, that, was, that was given, I think, a few years ago. And, uh, and Chuck Colson, uh, regardless of what you think about him, he said that uh, pastors need to get their butts in the seat and do the hard work of study. And I think that goes for student pastors just as much as it does for pastors, that we need to get our butts in the seat, do the hard, do the hard work of researching adolescent development, do the hard work of researching the, uh, the context in which we live, and discerning how we can then apply it to the ministry of prudence. The third task of, uh, of practical theology is the normative task. And this is the process of using theological concepts to interpret events, constructing ethical norms to guide our responses, and learning from what we call best practices. So this task asks, what ought to be going on? It, it sort of, it beckons forth the Christ question of sorts. Like, what, what does Jesus have to say about this event? What is the, where is the gospel in this event? In, in the event of a suicide, or in the in event of a divorce, or, or in the event of just two kids blowing up in your youth group, like, where is the gospel for those kids and that family in that event? Um, this is the ministry of of prophecy, um, and prophecy, as I define it here, is is encouraging guidance is is uh, the encouraging guidance of others to grow in their relationship with Jesus Christ, not just the prediction of the future. Although, as you speak into the lives of kids and into the lives of families, you may actually paint them a picture of where their lives may be going. So that's where you can speak into what the road looks like ahead. But I, I use the word prophecy here as um, as a picture of the beckoning future of sorts. Um, and finally, the last task is the pragmatic task of practical theology. This, this task asks, how might we respond as pastors, as ministers, as, as awesome volunteers? Um, it's, it's, the, it's the ministry of provision. Um, the pragmatic task, I think, is the hardest task for, for any pastor to do because it requires the most activity from you. It requires the most amount of leadership. It, it probably requires you to step outside of yourself and insert yourself into situations to make the difficult decisions. Um, but ultimately, it's the one that's going to lead your ministry and guide your ministry into a realm of, um, of, of ultimately bearing a faithful witness to Jesus Christ. So that's my 12 minutes. Um, and so what I'd like to do is, if you have any quick questions, I can take uh, just a couple of minutes for that. But I'd, what I'd like for you guys to do is break up into groups of three or four and work through these four tasks together. So just try these on together and try them out within your context. I pair up with a couple of people who maybe live around the Bay Area or maybe out in the Valley and, um, and work through each one of these four tasks of practical theology and, and just kind of see what comes up from it. So, but before we get into that, are, are there any questions about what what I threw at you. 